My name is Zerubbabel. My father was Shealtiel. I am a direct descendant of King David. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is my direct descendant. I'm going to tell you about how God brought the Jews out of exile back into the Promised Land. If you don't know what the exile is, let me do a very quick explanation. When the Jews, the part of Israel who lived in the southern kingdom of Judah, repeatedly disobeyed God, God allowed the Babylonians to invade Jerusalem and destroy the city. They plundered the valuable articles of gold and silver from the temple, then destroyed it. The city buildings and walls were also damaged. Many of those who survived the battle were captured and taken into captivity in Babylon. Jerusalem was left in ruins. God spoke through the prophet Jeremiah to let the Jews know they would remain as captives for 70 long years before they would be able to return. My father, Shealtiel, was also taken into captivity. He was forced to journey for three long months from the destroyed city of Jerusalem to Babylon. Long after my father Shealtiel and my uncles had died, almost 70 years later, the mighty Babylonian Empire fell to Cyrus, king of the Medes and Persians. In the first year of his reign, God prompted Cyrus to announce that the Jews who wanted to return to their land could do so. Cyrus also declared that God had told him to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. Cyrus recommended that in the regions where the Jews now lived, they should donate gold, silver, animals, and goods to those going back, along with gifts for the temple. The order was written in the official records so that everyone would know it was the king's command. When the announcement was read, the heads of many families, the priests and the Levites, they prepared to return to Jerusalem and the surrounding regions of Judah to build and rebuild the temple and live back in the land that God had given us. I was one of those people. It was especially important for me to go back because I was the next in line from King David. I was thrilled. We were all thrilled to think we could return to the promised land and to the holy city of Jerusalem. Those of us who planned on taking this long journey prepared to go. Our neighbors were very generous, giving us gifts. King Cyrus returned 5,400 valuable items of gold and silver the Babylonians had stolen from the temple and gave them the Shesh Bazar, the leader of Judah. 42,000 people set off with our servants and animals on the long trip back to Judea. When we arrived in Jerusalem, we found the city in ruins. At the site of the ruined temple, Many of the heads of families gave generously to fund the rebuilding work. Over 500 kilos of gold was donated and 2,900 kilos of silver. Also donated were 100 sets of special clothes for the priests. Then we started rebuilding their houses in the cities and towns of Judea. Yeshua and I supervised the rebuilding of the altar of the temple. Then. During the seventh month, all of us gathered in Jerusalem. Sacrifices were offered to God and gifts given as we celebrated the holiday feast of the shelters. Money was given to pay craftsmen who worked with stone and wood and started rebuilding the temple. A few months later, the rebuilding work began, supervised by a team of Levites under the direction of Yeshua and myself. We gave gifts to the people of Tyre and Sidon to purchase large pieces of lumber. These were floated along the coast to the port of Joppa and then hauled over land up to Jerusalem. The first part of the project was to lay the foundations of the temple. And when these were set, the people gathered to worship God. The 
priests and Levites led the worship, singing the same songs that their ancestors had sung when the original temple had been built in the days of Solomon. They sang, God is good, he will always love Israel. Many of the people were so happy, they shouted aloud and the sound could be heard for a long distance. But the older people, who had seen the temple before it had been destroyed, they wept. They could see that the base of the new temple would be much smaller than the original temple. Everyone made so much noise you could not distinguish between those rejoicing and those crying. The rebuilding of the temple was underway, supervised by Yeshua and myself. However, the people who had occupied Judea before the Jews returned and who worshipped many false gods did not want the temple rebuilt. At first, they offered to help. Yeshua and I, knowing that they did not worship God, told them, You can have no part with us in building a temple for our God, the God of Israel. They did not like that. They tried to stop the building work by paying people money to bully the builders and threaten all of us. I am ashamed to say that their bullying worked. We stopped rebuilding the temple. You might be wondering why didn't we keep on working? Well, first of all, the threats of our enemies frightened us. We didn't want to be in danger. Secondly, it was a really big job to build that temple. After all, it took Solomon seven years to build the first temple. He had so many workers, carts, engineers, and support. We had to do all of this by ourselves. And to be honest, we just got tired out. But there was another reason. Many of our people put their energies into building expensive houses for themselves. I'm ashamed to say, but the work on the temple stopped. For 16 years we did nothing. During those 16 years, King Cyrus of Persia died and King Darius succeeded him. During the second year of King Darius' reign, two prophets, Haggai and Zechariah, spoke messages from God, urging us to continue with the rebuilding work on the temple. I am the prophet Haggai. The Lord Almighty said to me, These people say that this is not the right time to rebuild the temple. So God told me to tell these people these words. My people, why should you be living in well-built houses while my temple lies in ruins? Don't you see what is happening to you? You've sown much corn, but have harvested very little. You have food to eat, but not enough to make you full. You have wine to drink, but not enough to get drunk on. You have clothing, but not enough to keep you warm and a worker cannot earn enough to live on. Can't you see why this has happened? Now, go up into the hills, get the timber, and rebuild the temple. Then I will be pleased and will be worshipped as I should be. Wow, that shamed us all. We had come all the way from Babylon to rebuild God's temple, but soon gave up when things got difficult. We realized how much we had failed all those Jews in Babylon who had given us so much money so that we could rebuild the temple. Then Jeshua and Zerubbabel got those builders back to work once more. As soon as we started work again, Tat and I, the chief official, and other opponents of the Jews demanded to know who had given us permission to rebuild the temple. Tatanai and his friends wrote a letter to King Darius reporting what was going on and listed the names of those who were involved in the work. While they were waiting for the reply, we kept working. We wrote our own letter to King Darius explaining that King Cyrus had given us permission and had returned the gold and silver objects that belonged to the temple. King Darius ordered that a search be made of the records to see what King Cyrus had decreed. They found a book in the palace in Ecbatana, in the district of Media, that contained a record of the command King Cyrus had given. It decreed that the Jews had been given permission and detailed the size of the base of the temple. It ordered that gold and silver items from the original temple be returned. 
King Darius immediately gave orders to Tatanai not to stop the work in the temple and to keep our enemies away from the building site. Furthermore, King Darius decided that the work in the temple was to be paid from the taxes raised in the region. The priests were to be given animals for sacrifice, and wheat, salt, wine, and oil. Anyone who disobeyed this order or tried to change this law would be hanged. When the ruling was announced, the enemies of the Jews had no choice but to obey. The prophets Haggai and Zechariah spoke words of encouragement, and the work went on, and nobody tried to stop us. In the sixth year of the reign of King Darius, the temple was finished. The people gathered for a special opening ceremony. It was a happy occasion with sacrifices made for the sins of the people. Priests were appointed to look after the temple and its work. The Passover was celebrated with great joy. Now, after the Hebrews escaped from Egypt, God commanded Moses to make a tent temple. It was to be the place where God dwelled on earth. When the Hebrews finished making the tent temple, the glory of God's presence came down upon it. Many centuries later, God commanded King Solomon to build a stone and wooden temple in Jerusalem. Again, when it was completed, the glory of God's presence came down upon it with great power. It was a beautiful building which lasted for centuries. However, Judah's sin was so terrible that God sent the Babylonian army to destroy the temple and to burn Jerusalem and carry the Jews far away into exile. Before that exile happened, God's glory left the temple. After 70 years in exile, Zerubbabel led the Jews from Babylon back to Jerusalem. This story told how they built basically a new temple, smaller and far less beautiful than Solomon's. A long time after Zerubbabel built that temple, King Herod, the king who tried to kill the baby Jesus, made many improvements on the temple. However, Unlike Moses' temple or Solomon's temple, the glory of God's presence never filled this temple. Well, that is, although Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came. That temple stood for almost six centuries. It was in this temple that Jesus taught and ministered. When Jesus, as God the Son, came to the temple, the leaders of Israel rejected him, ignored the teachings of the prophets, and put him to death. When he died, the curtain of the temple ripped from the top all the way to the ground. Forty years later, the Romans destroyed that temple completely. Many believe that in the very last days, the temple will be rebuilt just a few years before Jesus Christ returns. Will there be a temple in the new heavens and new earth? This is what the Apostle John wrote. I did not see a temple in it because the Lord God the Almighty and the Lamb are its temple.